Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to the podcast presented by the Daily Pal. This is Pranati, Amit, and Purva. And uh, we're from a city-specific culture and food site called the Daily Pow. And this is our fortnightly podcast, the, the Powdcast. So on uh, this episode of uh, the podcast, we'll be talking about new culture venues in, in our section called The Scene. Uh, we'll be talking about walks that you can take uh, visitors on in Metro Station. And in Bombay Binge, which is our food section, we'll be talking about Sindhi food. So next up is The Scene. Scene. So the last um, six months, the city has got a lot of new uh, culture spaces, a lot, a lot of music venues actually. So I'm going to let Amit tell us a little bit about the new ones. Well, I don't know whether a lot is <laughs> the right, uh, you know, term because there have been a few, mm -hmm. and you know, because we really get new culture venues, I think that the perception is that we've had quite, a, you know, right. uh, quite a bit, and like um, a couple of them that I've been to and seen gigs at are basically uh, this place called Tuning Fork, which is a brand new. Uh, it's a place in Car. And I don't know whether we mentioned it in our last podcast when we talked about Blue Frog relocating. Now, this is sort of like a mini version of Blue Frog. It can but only it's a very mini version, It's a very right? mini version. It, can only, it is actually not in the nicest location. It is inside a Hotel Unicontinental in Khar, uh, which many years ago used to have, I think, this, this rooftop bar called U-Turn, which was pretty popular. But it has sort of a slightly shady reputation. But, uh, you know, Tuning Fork is not at all shady. It's, um, <laughs> it's on the first floor. And it's like, it's sort of set up like a restaurant, but it has a stage. So you look at, you look onto the stage. Uh, the stage, though, is very small also. Uh, while this can seat about 50, the stage can't fit in a drum kit. Oh, <laughs> so okay. they have this very unique system wherein they have a studio that's attached to uh, to the cafe and it's actually right it's adjacent to it so the drummer actually sits in the studio by himself so he can't he can can't be on the stage so he can on. see what's going on the band can see him they can hear him it's kind of like this studio studio <laughs> setup he has a pair of you know headphones he can listen to everything that's going on they sort of communicate that way but it's like he's almost like punished and you're know, separate from the thing but it's really amusing. But as a as a viewer, yeah. you see the band on the stage. You see the band on stage. You can see the, the drummer, but obviously it depends on where you're standing. Because if you're standing like you know, if you're facing the front of the stage, you won't. But if you're sort of towards the right of the stage, you can see the drummer. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of funny. But what's great about this venue is that um, I mean, I went for a gig there a couple of weekends ago. And um, it was actually Tejas's gig. Tejas, the host of Geek Fruit, and was packed. And uh, so people can stand, or do they? People can stand. I mean, it's but not much. They don't clear the tables. Well, they don't clear the table because it's a cafe. So okay. the idea is that uh, you sort of get there, you get a drink, and you know you can eat as well. So you're just standing over so, people. So yeah. So I tables. actually was there. I got there right about when the gig was supposed to start, and there was. There was me and a couple of other sort of people who were there and who were standing and we were really, the people who were sitting were getting really annoyed uh, because, you know, uh, we were blocking their view a little bit. So we actually stood next to the sound sound guy, next to the sound console, which is right next to the door. Um, and, but what I really liked about this venue was that even though it was packed, once the gig started everybody was silent so it's a like a listening audience it's not like it's not like a place that people come to drink or eat you know they're coming for the gig and uh, and i think it can only fit a small yeah, number like of like I said, 50, 50 people, 50 people right? but yeah obviously when you have standing people you can fit in maybe 20 25 people more you can you know uh, stand against the walls and Stuff like that. But what's also unique about Uning Fork is their uh, the sort of arrangement that they have. So they don't actually uh, pay the band. So what they do is they pay them with studio time. Because they've got this studio. Uh, a, uh, a band will get, you know, X number of hours oh, of studio time if you, uh, yeah. if, you, if you play there. And they also have a very simple system. Most of their gigs are all cover charge gigs. So you play, I think, depending on the band, it's sort of 300 or 500. Uh, it's a 500 rupee cover charge. Uh, so, you know, they sort of 
making sure that they make a minimum amount of uh, money with every gig um, and they also have bira on tap which is another good thing <laughs> except that their bira was kind of sweet it had like it was slightly fruity more fruity than your regular sort of bira white maybe it was an anomaly on the day you went no no apparently oh. some people who've been there before said that oh, uh, really? okay. that it that it was always like they're adding strange. like some floral essence to it <laughs> yeah i don't know why that is but uh, yeah so that oh <laughs> but the service was pretty terrible i have to say this and i'm not sure whether this was uh, because they got Tejas, who's pretty sort of popular. Now, the majority of their gigs are singer songwriter, uh, you know, uh, singer songwriters. Because also, I think it's more suitable suitable to that kind of music, you know, really acoustic stuff. All the Tejas had a band, um, so, and I think that they had all of two waiters handling the entire sort of room, and you know, two waiters handling like a crowd of sixty people. It can, you know, service can be annoyingly slow. but that was like the only negative that i could i found about the place and so yeah and then the other place that i went to uh, was this place called the mumbai assembly which is in something called the kanara catholic association hall near leelavati hospital in bandra sounds very political it is it's not political i think religious. it's more maybe slightly religious or something but it's mumbai actually assembly. it's just a hall that you yeah. that you re- they rent out and uh, this is actually very close to birth song cafe Oh, so that's okay. the sort of landmark. And they've been doing a lot of events. They've actually. been doing a lot of Every events. Every week, uh, we list events that yeah, take place over there. Yeah, and they've been doing kind of different events, not your typical stuff. I actually went for not a typical gig again. I went for something called the Sound of the Sufis, which is this uh, this kind of show where uh, uh, these three musicians. I mean, they, actually, it's they call it a part storytelling, part um, you know, musical performance, where they sort of take you through the history of Sufism. with a little bit of you know talking a little bit about the uh, you know the various saints and also talk and then you know interlacing that with uh, um music with, with music and the way they did the show was slightly again different they talked more about the process of putting the show together uh, so in that sense it was a bit uh, It was different, but it sort of suited the venue uh, so because it was just—it was just, just, it like, was just a a, like a hall. It was not right. a hall. This one, this was more like a room. I right. think in one of the buildings which okay. they had. I mean, in the building, which uh, it was kind of long rather than you know regular square shaped, and uh, so, so they kind of make a circular kind of things. Yeah, exactly. It was plastic chairs. It was not. <laughs> okay. It was not something very exo- you know very. Yeah. Kind of, I think uh, uh, the good thing about having you know small and. you know modest venues like this is that they're more affordable for people who are putting up uh, uh cultural events like you know, they've done some theater shows and the ticket prices okay. are very affordable you know 200 and 300 yeah. rupees so i guess that's one great thing about venues like this starting is that they're affordable for um groups of you know culture practitioners mm-hmm. who who do this at an amateur level yeah, exactly. or exactly Who We're don't make off, money yeah. doing yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. Assembly is a slightly dull name, though. And <laughs> I think like that they uh, maybe because it's well, I'm not not a school, but yeah, I, I well, I think it was started with by somebody who used to work at the British Council, who got a sense of, you know, how uh, culture in the city works, and they're doing a bunch of workshops, and they did like they're doing different kind of events, like they do plays. They did some talk about music videos. Um, I think right. uh, recently, it's a regular series called the Listening Sessions, yeah, which. So, Takes place over there. You know, I guess we want to do something slightly different, and we've seen this at like the Hive, which is in Car, which has been around for a while. And it's, it's, I think, the similar kind of ethos where you know people who don't get the opportunity to go to regular spaces uh, do that. And actually, that brings me to another interesting venture that's actually um, going to start by the folks of the Commune. Now, the Commune is this uh, little collective that's been set up by Roshan Abbas, you know, the TV host uh, and uh, Ankur Tiwari. and um, who is a musician who is a musician they've set up something called beat map now beat map is going to function i think it's going to be an app uh and what it's going to do is it's going to co- connect culture practitioners with venues uh and how this is going to work is whether you're a singer or a poet or a comedian or a musician or uh, i mean a dancer you basically you can sign up to this um, app and say look i am an artist i'd like to perform and then If you're a venue and you're interested in hosting these kind of performances, you also, uh, you know, you sign up to this, and they literally sort of are like the middleman who are you know putting these guys together. Has this app launched already? It's not launched yet. It's going to launch soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting. So do, these are the two uh, music 
uh, gigs and I went to recently. Uh, now, Pranati, you went for a talk re- at something called New Vasant Ashram, re- which right. is not really new. It's actually it's not new. New Vasant Ashram is quite an old lodge. Um, it's been around since um, I think the 1930s or the 40s, and it's a very modest uh, lodge. You know, I mean, you know, the old school idea of lodge. It's exactly that. You have um, dorm rooms. and you have very small uh, single and double rooms and they're very cheap uh, they go for 300 and 400 rupees a night and this is uh, in crawford market okay um so the owner of new vasant ashram is this lady called sujata rao she and her sister run this place her sister lives in bangalore and they inherited the property from their father who um you know in the early days of the lodge would go to vt station mm-hmm. and you know tell people getting off the train that you know, I, mean, i own this lodge if you need a oh, cheap okay. place to stay come and stay here so that's how he <coughs> would get uh, w- would get customers direct marketing direct marketing exactly so now new vasant ashram has been renovated in the last uh, you know 3 4 years mm-hmm. uh it's on the top floors of this very old building on Crawford Market the approach is it's pretty grungy you know it's there, there's a shop in, in the passageway the entry passageway uh, you, you see a lot of pan stains you see some broken mm-hmm. basins lying around it's it's a really grungy entrance and you cr- climb up some rickety stairs but this is not part of this is the building it's not part of the lodge it's right? not part of the lodge and the lodge itself it's it's really it's really modest mm-hmm. you know and the kind of people who um who stay there uh, a lot of them seem to be you know perhaps i uh, definitely not uh, mm-hmm. working class but people who can ju- you know afford to spend just 3 400 bucks a night and also a lot of yeah. single women anyway oh, so they have women. a lot okay. of single women yes uh, stay stay at the lodge okay. you know single working women who come to the so, city for yeah. work they stay there which is which is great and a lot of uh, tourists as well anyway so they have this one room which um, it's quite a cozy room it's it's not very large and she's laid out uh, mattresses and okay. cushions and she plans to host events over there so the talk that i went to it was it was quite an app it venue for that talk because it was about bhendi bazaar okay. and crawford market is fairly close to bhendi bazaar mm-hmm. um so it was it was a rather interesting place to attend this talk I mean, you know it was this this room fa- ha- faces a balcony which overlooks uh, uh crawford market and um so it was it was just a very interesting venue and the lodge has an interesting story yeah. a back story and i saw some photos in the lodge she just seemed to have spruced up the lodge yeah she has so over the last 3 4 years she hired an architect okay. and they completely redid the lodge and they found hidden architectural features for mm-hmm. example they found these arches that they didn't know what they you know they found them after peeling the plaster okay. and the arches suggest uh, you know very high ceilings uh, perhaps that building accommodated something else mm-hmm. in the 19th century who knows but yeah. perhaps it have, was a go down or something do they have any programming in mind or is it just like whoever rents it and then well i i think Uh, she hasn't had too many events here now but okay. she says that she's got a lot of in- inquiries okay um so for example someone approached her wanting to host a vegan pop up <laughs> and it's just the most unlikely place yeah. for a but vegan pop up but that's the pop-up. thing right people are always on the lookout for something alternative I mean, something that's very i can completely very, yeah. uh, picture hipsters thinking yeah. wow what an amazingly grungy place this is and yeah. you know flocking exactly. there for a vegan pop up of all things and it is so un- unlikely yeah, you know yeah. that brings me to the one that i had been to hipster yeah something hipster um i i went for the listening room mm-hmm. reproduce the reproduces uh they had a session on oh, a what weekend what is the reproduce reproduce is basically it started by this guy called rana goes who is a uh, uh, he's a delhi based uh, organizer of sort of music events and uh, but basically from initially when i sort of read about it and i have been trying to go for one of these events but they have them across the country this the delhi base but they've had this this thing was the third one in bombay and it's been kind of like a traveling um tra- traveling series i think they initially reproduced was sort of to have kind of noise artists <laughs> you know mm-hmm. very sort of experimental electronic music 
to to perform there and the first one is at project 88 the second one was at the same jude bakery in bandra and the third one was at coral studio in bandra but of course they're all on sunday which you know is our editing day <laughs> so it's very difficult to get out but yeah purva you managed to go for it yeah show. i actually only got uh one artist um he's actually he's a friend uh goes by saw horse is his artist name <laughs> and he play um, i'm presuming with the name like saw horse you're definitely doing kind of distorted uh sounding kind of very experimental very experimental let me not go into the genre because i won't know how to describe it i'm not sure even he would put it down to a genre but um it was the space itself took some amount of uh, getting used to because it's uh, it's on the first floor of this bandra building it's opposite um, saint Tre- saint teresa's church mm-hmm. and um uh, you, what you notice just getting it's so it's on the first floor so it's, you know, obviously you take the stairs but what you notice just going up is that you could i could hear the music because what coral studio is is it's a it's an unfinished flat so there are, it's like a, it's an absolute kacha flat so what what that means is that there's no paint there's no pop job there's no there's like uh, random bulbs are strung from some corners of this apartment and you it's said a pretty bankly, big apartment balconies without any railings right? the the windows had no grills or no no panes so is it was an actual studio or is it just a well, the name it, that they call it i think it's a name they've given it and um, it had like it 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 felt like a fairly large apartment it would may, may have been a two or three two bedroom maybe mm-hmm. and um with this sort of massive hall so one of the rooms was like occupied so it's, it felt like the people who run it um they had set up like a small speaker system like lights there's some sort of uh, you know some strange art on the walls like like two pairs of eyes looking at you from every corner of the room and you know just very um how, how do i put it like oh and where the artists were playing was like uh it was like this sort of a, a section of the flat where um there was like this these cement bags and trash lying around and i was like okay you know there was barely any clearly, lighting as uh, well it's clearly a work in progress this i i don't know place. if they plan to do it up any further well they can't possibly I think leave like that being what it was maybe because maybe that's probably the appeal be, uh, sort of i'm guessing like, this will sort of violate some building regulations to yeah, leave and you know you could hear the music pretty yeah. loudly so then somebody mentioned that oh that's because nobody else stays here and yeah, i was okay. like that doesn't seem possible because yeah. there were cars parked on the building and uh, the music was pretty loud okay. uh but i i i just well, couldn't understand could it felt like you know you're in bands, back in college bands, and so. you're going for a like some frat party yeah. to some really shady venue and but you know i you wonder whether they'll do more your own because this is kind of like i said reproduces uh, is a sort of rotating thing but yeah. the sort of the extreme end the opposite end of of something like coral studio was ministry of new which is this co-working space i think we mentioned it before it's very beautiful in like kitab yeah. mahal on dn road this sort of heritage building and they've yeah. done it up uh, it's um, one of the co-founders is uh, scandinavian she is uh, she's dutch, dutch actually dutch, mali's blumendal uh, blumendal who you know who is an interior designer yeah. she's really done it up nicely it actually looks like a hotel it, it looks like, like a boutique, boutique hotel, hotel yeah. and you know um, she's it's got really nice night and they occasionally and, do host events i mean it's yeah, mainly so they've a done they've done space. one art exhibition and they do a lot of private events yeah. but i know that they're very open to hosting more events in fact they've done some bollywood photo shoot and stuff so people are renting it already it is a co-working space by day but by well, like they, by the she evening she did say it's primarily a co-working it's space co- and because the, of the way they look she's she was a bit amused that people think that you can rent it yeah, only yeah. for yeah well i think that but she did also mention that that's going to be the one thing that sort of helps them make the more mon- most money right. because co-working right now is so kind of new and especially yeah. they're not cheap but also this you know i think the, the reason why they're not cheap is because they've invested so much into it and to make it look how it does look and you can see pictures of it on our site but uh, so but they they're keen to do more events and what's encouraging is that places want to sort of you know host cultural uh, activities which is something increasingly that any cultural practitioner will tell you it's so hard to find a venue right whether you're talking about whether it's a restaurant or a bar or whatever which have been your conventional venues it's kind of hard and you know you have of course your typical auditoriums but they're very expensive to rent so if you're really upcoming and you just want to place to perform i mean you have places like the hive and you but you've also got a whole bunch of new places yeah okay so that's so that's all for the scene and we'll be back with metro station long long ago not in bethlehem but in a place nearby 
there was a wonderful birth of a huge show which I like to call Cyrus Says. A show that encapsulates everything in human history from the first Homo sapien to the last Homo sapien uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to India. This is a show which tells you everything about everything. If you want to know, avoid Google, come to us. It's called Cyrus Says. Get new episodes every Monday on the IBM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcast on. You get one banana water free with every podcast. Right. I'll just check that. I'll just check that. Metro Station. So in this episode of uh, Metro Station, we'll be talking about the various walks that uh, you can take your friends or people visiting from outside the city, various walks you can take them on. Yeah. Um, and these are sort of, you know, alternative ways uh, to get to know the city. I mean, it's better than going on a on your average mtdc bus tour it's 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 a way of engaging with the city that uh, yeah. that people might not be used to uh, so we've been talking about we've talked about various walks on on the podcast before and we've written about it on the website and this is sort of this is going to be our uh, sort, of uh, sort of best of be- best Bombay of. walks and also walks that we would we would like to go on. So Amit, do you want to yeah. start? Well, one of the reasons that we're constantly being asked by people, uh, you know, I have somebody visiting, where do I take them? And yeah, you mentioned the MTDC tour and while it's very unlikely that you know, somebody that we know is going to go for the MTDC tour, but if you just look at the kind of places that they take you to, it's stuff like the museums, it's stuff like, you know, religious uh, spots like Siddhi Vinayak and Haji Ali and, you know, people already know that kind of well, stuff. they're taking you to Antilla. They're not taking you to Antilla, but they're sort of <laughs> pointing it out to you. You're driving yeah. by it and yeah. saying, oh, by the way, that's Antilla, which people can do anyway and like it's really yeah. not the best way to sort of experience the city. <laughs> and yeah, I'm constantly... I hear about this like, you know, I have a guest visiting, where do I take them? And um, I think that these are kind of walks that, there are two kinds of walks, right? They're the kind of walks that you can sign up for, which uh, Pranati will talk a little bit about and will really get a, give you a sense of city history. Uh, and that the other kind of walks that you can actually do, do yourself, yourself and yeah. you can actually chart them out yourself because anybody who's grown up in the city or lived in the city for a few number of years, for a decent number of years, We'll know about these places and can do them themselves. But one of the things you can do is an Irani cafe walk. And Purva, you suggested a very easy way to do this, which was to download <laughs> our, um, our Fort Map, yeah. which actually is a is a map that has so basically it's, it's basically three. It has three purposes because not only can you do an Irani cafe walk, you can, you can do a seafood, seafood restaurant yeah. map, and seafood is such a big part of the you know yeah. Bombay's cuisine. And you know, it's a pretty it's a pretty good list. We've covered practically everything. Uh, I think worth uh, eating at in the fort area and uh, real gems there. A lot of old places. So Again, what are some of the places that that uh, you There's um, Apurva is there. There's uh, seafood Angkor. institutions. Oh yeah, yeah, these are seafood institutions. Mahesh, there's Cafe Shanchom. Military. There's Ideal Corner. Uh, these are Parsi. Uh, these are pa- Parsi. Parsi so uh, they're all sort of. So, uh, there's Hotel Deluxe. There's yeah. uh, Ke- uh, Taste of Kerala. So it's a really nice, vibrant. Um, food scene but I think if you wanted to do an Irani cafe walk for example Mm -hmm. you would go to cafe ideal you would go to cafe military I think we covered the teapot cafe as well we've also put in Jimmy Boy we've put in Jimmy Boy that's right yeah so I mean, so I think Britannia is not on this list because it doesn't yeah. fall into the area. But then it's you know the sort of def- default place that people go to is Britannia, which yeah. is great, and you should go to Britannia. But like you know, and these the are the other five, places, five, you know? six places yeah. you can go to as well, and which yeah. would really give you a sense. And and you can almost explore the city via mm-hmm. these cafes, right? Because Fort is yeah. one of the most. Uh, probably the, the most historical neighborhood that we have and yeah. it's also nice to walk around yeah and finish so up at Walga Pan House <laughs> which I would do yeah so that's definitely one that you can do then the other one that you can do is a single screen cinema walk I mean we have um, we talked about this before we have like the second largest number of Art Deco buildings in the city after Miami in the world and you know the cinemas like Regal Eros that you've probably been to when you were a kid Liberty um, you can do this on your own you can literally go there and uh, you know whether you catch a movie there or not you can just go outside and. Just, or there are people who conduct yeah, walks people who are for example this. Um, this girl called Nikita Rana who used to work at Liberty conducts uh, a walk I mean it's not very regular it's sporadic, but it covers various single screen cinemas. But she conducts in the it area. or she organizes she it? She organizes it and it's conducted by Parminder uh, Singh. Parminder Singh, who is, who a, is a retired commander, a commander, yeah. Indian naval commander. 
and um, it covers uh, eros regal liberty as well and and edward as well edward is not um an art deco theater uh, and also capital cinema which is one of the oldest um, cinemas in the city so that's you know if you're if you're fond of architecture and a cinema buff then that's one mm-hmm. walk that you can do yeah and if you're fond of art you can go for art night thursday which is uh, conducted is that on the first or that's second that's a, a monthly a monthly event and yeah. on that day galleries so, bo- so galleries when is, you know in when the, it is is it on the first or second thursday uh, i'm not sure when Let's it is Google but it, it is it is on <laughs> yeah one thursday of the month and galleries on this on this day they stay open uh, till 9:30 at night so you can gallery hop after work and there are a number of i mean bombay's galleries are concentrated in the fort and kolaba area in fact uh, they've come together as the bombay art district uh, and on this day galleries from um, kemol prescott road which is in the fort area Uh, right up to Project Eighty Eight, which is at the other end um, in Kolaba, are open till nine thirty at night. And is there wine and hors d'oeuvres and stuff? Not not every not time, time, but okay. a lot of galleries choose to open new shows on this day. Okay, so That's it's so it's open to the public. This right. isn't It some is private. It is indeed the second uh, Thursday. Second Thursday yeah. of every month, so it's not a. the openings are no longer private okay. you know so if if you're so anyone can go for an opening on an art night thursday so that's one interesting walk you can do and these galleries are at a very walkable distance from each other yeah and if you if you're more into sort of street art then what you can also do is uh, on the other side down in bandra there's a whole bunch of graffiti that you can see and this is all spread around sort of the villages the bandra's old villages uh like pali village and uh, you know chapel runwar yeah. the chapel road or the road area and uh, what you can do actually you know uh, right next to mehboob studio at the sort of the end of uh, one of these roads is culture shop this graphic art design store where uh, the owner jas will actually if you walk in there and you tell her you know she's a she's a graffiti artist herself and she will actually draw out a map for you telling you some of the most significant spots there's some stuff in bandstand as well so and again this is one of those walks that actually doubles up because you also get to see all the really nice portuguese style villas in these uh, in these areas and also to get a sense of you know that kind of traditional architecture you can go to other places you can go to katachi wadi in uh, in the gilgaon area yeah. i mean it's a, it's a very small very small neighborhood um the size of a hamlet really but the yeah, bungalows are you can walk are, through it you can actually walk through it in 5 minutes but you would want to stop but and you like, would want to stop because in. the yeah. bungalows are absolutely stunning um and at the end of the walk you can wrap up with freshly made wafers there's a little wafer shop yeah. um in the in the area and um if you have more time on your hands you can just step out you know onto the girgaon main road and walk around girgaon and Ga- gaiwadi uh, which is a fairly historic neighborhood so that's a great walk to do but with wafers you can also go to lal bag right is that part of the lal bag um so the lal all? bag is a popular it's a popular walk mm-hmm. and um uh, the one sort of touring company called khaki tours runs a, a regular lal bag and parel walk and they take you around various sites in the area and yes in the la- the lal bag walk does include chura gali and masala gali which is full of wafer and shops and mirchi gali yeah exactly so full yeah. of your yeah, snacks and, and really good all kinds wafers. of masalas yeah. and, and wafers as well and what's what's particularly interesting about um khaki tours walk of this area is that they also take you to a farm right is that yeah so one of the pit stops in the lal bag walk is a uh, a stunning two acre farm in the middle of and this is lal something bag. that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to do by yourself probably you wouldn't because you wouldn't know where it was yeah you yeah. wouldn't chance upon it because it's it's inside a little colony mm-hmm. so this is not something that you can see from the main road i mean you can see it if you're in one of the high rises uh that overlook this farm but otherwise if you're walking you can't see it and it's absolutely a beautiful farm they grow vegetables there and they sell to nearby markets and it it's that was one of the revelations yeah. of the walk for me because i mean that's something that you probably wouldn't expect to see in bombay like this two acre farm in the heart of the city but what you can also do in bombay which is one of a few green lungs is visit the borivali national park which is the largest yeah. 
national park or it's the, we are the only city with a national park that's right we're, we're, we're the only uh, city with a national park we have leopards and i mean i don't know how people how it escapes them that this is such an incredible Remarkable thing, thing yeah. Yeah. um so it's great to go cycling and walking around borivli national park on sundays it can um, be very crowded from what i've heard though but it can yeah. be but it's it's this beautiful it's green doing, expanse it's so got it's the kanheri caves that's you know that's right That's There's also right. like a bunch of uh, food walks uh, that have just Are been Are you bringing Bombay binge into <laughs> metro station Goa? I am very quickly actually because they 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 these two ones that are particularly interesting. And There's, one of them actually uh, is kind of concurrent with the with the chapel road the street art map right because it's actually the same same area yes so when yeah so while you're out like uh, looking at all the graffiti you can also so ranwar has all these small sort of goan and um, these little goan food stalls and east indian food stalls yeah. and uh, a, a lot of these so there's something called the food and doodle trail um, asian paints and wandering foodie which is a food events company have collaborated on this and basically they take you to like f- five or six pit stops and some of these are just people uh people's homes and they're selling things like fugia or coconut pan yeah. rolls or like potato chops there's kalpana snacks mart lude snack shop so it's a cute one we it's a cute one and you know uh, i'm what is also unique about this is that like you said some of these people who are literally selling this from their homes out from their homes yeah. so what they do is they lay they out tables yeah, yeah. They, they literally lay out yeah. tables and they lay out these sort of uh, Uh, packet snacks or sometimes fresh yeah. snacks and they're really inexpensive the walk is 300 rupees food yeah. is inclusive and uh, the other one you can do is a sindhi food trail also organized by wandering foodie it takes place in chembur east it's uh, a slightly uh, run down area but i've been there uh, there's veg refreshments there's a pani puri stall there's gopal mutton jama for its um, gulab Sweet, famed right? gulab jamun um, again if you're a a person in, uh, inclined towards regional food this is a good one to do and the food there is fantastic so yeah these yeah, are yeah and you know you can either sign up with guys like watering foodie or khaki tours to do all of these and you know you can uh, check out their facebook pages or uh, you know to get updates or so check out our site because we Constantly uh, they're usually happening on, on the weekend on, on the weekend and, guide in our weekend guide yeah. we list these uh, list these walks or you can do them by yourself you know okay. so So that's yeah. it for uh, Metro Station and we'll be back with Bombay Binge. Hello there. My name is Naveen Narona and as a gay person in India, I get asked a lot of stupid questions. A beta is it LGBT or eligibility? How do to men procreate? Bro is grinder better than Tinder or what? We answer all these questions and much more on my podcast Keeping It Queer, where I talk to individuals from the LGBT community in India and learn about their personal stories. Catch all the episodes on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app you like. Till then, keep it queer. Bombay Binge. On this episode of Bombay Binge, we're going to be talking about Sindhi food, which actually we just mentioned in our recommendations of walks you can do. And uh, Purva and I actually both half Sindhi. Uh, now, I, while I am fairly <laughs> deracinated, Purva is one of those secret Sindhis who doesn't like to acknowledge the fact that she is. I don't from the community. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a big fan. Except of... that your eating habits are pretty Sindhi. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah I just realized that you eat a far more Sindhi food than I do, actually. Yeah. So we eat a mix of Sindhi and Punjabi, and I think that uh, there's a lot of overlap in the cuisines as well, for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about. Um, yeah, tell us about why we're talking about Sindhi. Why we're we doing this is because I recently reviewed um, a food delivery service called Synthful. It operates out of Car. It's by it's like this mother and son duo. Which Which, uh, and uh, I gave it a good review. The food was pretty good. Um, again, with Sindhi food, it differs from home to home, as it did with theirs. So their Sai Bhaji, which is like this palak and chana dal thing, it's this is Sindhi staple. It's like a stew. Uh, like a it's, it's not sort really of. Like, it's more like it's a bhaji. It's more like a dal. It's yeah, more like, like a dal palak. Yeah, like a bhaji dal sort of. You know, I find even the consistency varies uh, home to home. Yeah, exactly. So um, I had Sai Bhaji for dinner yesterday, but it was not an authentic Sai Bhaji because my mom said <laughs> that didn't have a lot of ingredients in it. Did it no, have so, meat in it? 
No, I think I would have oh. liked it better if it had meat. <laughs> so, so what is authentic, right? With, with Sindhi food, I mean, like I said, it, it varies so much. Even the Sindhi curry varies drastically, and what varies is basically what vegetables you're putting in it. Anyway, so we tried Sindhful, and um, while they have a pretty good. Uh, selection of Sindhi dishes. They've also felt the need to add um, some Chinese and some North Indian food into their menu, and I, I guess that's also like a business decision because when somebody's just ordering online, all the deliveries are via like Zomato or Scootsy or um, these delivery uh, delivery sites. But um, they haven't actually put in a lot of the like the day to day dishes that we eat as sindhis and i've i've always wondered about this um even with other restaurants in the city that are serving sindhi food so there's kailash parbat there's karachi sweets there's a lot of uh, there's karachi beach. sweets is a sweet shop it's though. a sweet shop but they do uh, they have a full chart and food Okay. Uh, delivery section. and e- section. They have a section. They have a section, right? and you can eat in as mm-hmm. well. And there's um, also veg refreshments. There's veg refreshments, which is in Chambur. Uh, Chambur. It's uh, vegetarian, and uh, yeah, last I, I I do think it's vegetarian, but I'm going to check that up. And um, so the, the the Chambur East has a lot of these small stalls. They're all sort of roadside stalls, and. The thing about Sindhi food in Bombay is that the chaat and the mithai is very well represented. So you'll get a lot of the pani puris, and how we do it is we serve bundi inside the puri as opposed to the ragda. And um, yeah, I mean for the longest time I thought that was the only way you ate pani, pani puri. puri yeah. yeah, so. Um, the so like the the chaat would include like chole patties or what we call as chap which is like this aloo patties with the chana spiced chana dal inside it's and delicious they all tend to be heart shaped for some they're reason they're all heart shaped which is really cute you you can also do like a mutton mince uh, patties which is what sinful is serving so sinful has done a good sort of they've got a good selection of sindhi dishes but i feel like there's a lot more you can do and i don't understand why this reluctance to not uh, but bring what are you not like getting on the menus i mean because you talk about sort of sindhi staples right yeah. you think about so sindhi I'll, curry for instance yeah the curries the, and the okay so dal pakwan is like the most widely represented dish it's like the dansak of sindhi food mm-hmm. when it comes to restaurant yeah. representation it's and also with, deep fried and so pakwan is like, like a, de- a deep fried maida puri and the dal is a chana dal and it's full of ghee and you put like masalas like your lal mirch and whatever over it and it's had with chutney mm-hmm. chutney like green chutney or imli chutney yeah. and it's a breakfast staple do, do know that this sort of survey where they in bombay <laughs> i think and they uh, amongst different communities and they realized that the highest number of diabetics and heart patients were sindhis, sindhis. and gujaratis yeah, yeah. And, you know all placed down, down to the diet yeah. also our, 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 our sort of dependence on things like besan and uh, you know deep frying and ghee and mawa and khoya like everything all our sweets are made of those things so yeah so things like aloo to curry um, the pakoras are well known so sana pakoras you'll find almost everywhere which is like this deep fried double gram flour pakora um, the things that don't make it to the menus are uh, um like or like i'll tell you an ingredient that you're bound to fi- find in every sindhi home is bee which is the lotus stem you know right. and we prepare it in so many ways so you can make like a bee sabzi with it we fry them so we sun dry the stem and we fry Deep them deep fried crispy is the best way to eat I it love i love the bee now some crisps. restaurants are discovering lotus stem like yeah. for example bombay canteen has yeah. a lotus stem yeah. in one item i think bombay canteen has been most experimental with That's right. ingredients but normally across Cross cuisines. Normally, lotus you know? stem is not something you'd find outside of a Sindhi. Yeah, home. and um, you know, we sometimes we in some dishes we maintain the crunch, and sometimes we cook it down till it's tender. We also use the corm of the the lotus stem in a different sabzi. You can fry that like a two can eat it. Um, then there's pool patasha, which is the 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 lotus seed. Uh, we sun dry it and have it as makhana, which is now sort of catching on as a healthy food also known snack. Fox nuts. Fox nuts, <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometimes we just use it uh, in a non-dry state, like as a fresh fox nuts, which, which has like a bit of heft to the curries. You know, so there's that. B, you don't get to see much of. Now there are. Um, there's also new. <laughs> Sindhis are obsessed. I don't understand this, and this is where I sort of, you know, don't. Um, 
my sindhiness sort of stops here. It's like this obsession with soya or Nutrella. And I'm like, why are we eating so much soya? But so, I don't think that's a traditional thing. It's, it's probably it's in not. every Sindhi home. It's not in my house. Yeah, well, but, I mean, your you house know, is I a lot of to, meat, you know. I have so. to say that uh, there's a lot of soya in my house as well. Yeah, and I don't have any Sindhi blood. It's uh, yeah, very I, I, odd. I don't and, think this but is you know, there are like a keema and you know, there is like a keema substitute. Yeah. There, there are certain sort of uh, Sindhi quirks. Yeah. You know, I used to um, a couple of years ago. I used to get a dabba to work, uh, which was prepared by a Sindhi caterer. Yeah. And one thing she sent me uh, <laughs> very guess. regularly was a pasta sabzi, macaroni sabzi. Yeah. yeah, and so this was macaroni cooked in a tomato-based yeah. gravy yeah. with uh, with, with the peas. peas. Yeah, macaroni and, peas. That's and, what it's called. And potatoes. <laughs> yeah. And I was a Appalled when I first got it. It's I mean, ghastly. I, I hate what it. Hey, I actually I like some it. macaroni. I, I grew to like it. it. I don't like, like peas in my pasta. Fuse, uh, they can't make. One of the fusion dishes, which was, which was like I was eating before I knew it was fusion, and right. like you know, it actually goes together. But the thing is, and what do you? Uh, I was I was flummoxed. Like, what do you eat it with? Do you eat rice way, or chapati? It's not really cooked like traditional yeah. pasta. It is not al dente. Yeah. It is like. Cooked down to like yeah, very soft like texture, a sabzi. so yeah. it really tastes like a sabzi, yeah. right? So, so that's you can also strange. make. A, so it's a, are, like a, a carb on carb kind exactly. of. There are <laughs> homes that also make the macaroni with the lotus stem. So you know that's like really bringing together two like um, intensely Sindhi ingredients. I, I would think. And one um, of the things we haven't mentioned though is sale bread. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm getting to it. <laughs> we all have so much to say about Sindhi food as well. So you see, like I think people feel passionate about it, but it's not really coming out in restaurants. The sale bread, which is like the Sindhi sort of tradition of using everything, Every no wastage. Yeah. So this is it's essentially stale bread, or we use Not it. Stale, we do but pao. like unused, unused bread, bread yeah. or, chap- or chapati. Fulka is very yeah. common. We call it sale fulka, and uh, uh, the kind of. Um, Masala, masala that you, you mix it, it yeah. it's a we use we eat it as breakfast and it differs from home to home we cook it in a tomato and onion sort of mix and it's a, like a kacha sort of mm-hmm. kacha mix you it's quite delicious and actually the onion sort of a big way that you sort of change like the sindhi mutton curry well, for basar, instance it's, it's called basar onion so there are yeah. a lot of basar gravies and uh, the tiwan which is a uh, Sindhi mutton is cooked. Yeah. That's the basis, basic. The Sindhi garam masala is um, sort of integral to all mm. all these dishes. Well, the one thing that I'm most interested in, yeah. uh, and this is something that we've eaten at your house several times. Oh, it's, it's thum. thum. Yes, yeah. So thum is something you know. I have no like other homes don't talk about this. I think this is specific to my house. Now, I uh, thum is actually Arabic for this. Uh, it's Arabic for aioli. It's uh, it's a, a sort of a cluster of garlic that you sort of blend with oil. So it's essentially aholi and it's an Arabic word. Anyway, what in my house, what we do is we we take a, we eat about six to seven kilos of garlic a month. Um, so you know, <laughs> no vampires sure you should, yeah, your be mentioning that. <laughs> yeah, the and uh, what we what what our version of thum is we basically uh, grind the garlic, um, coriander, green chilies, and either tomato or uh, anar dana, which is uh, pomegranate seeds, for a little bit of sourness, and we cook that with anything. It tastes fantastic with fish. It's great with potatoes. We make paneer in it and uh so that's one of the things there's gobika das now das is something that's very typical to my home as well there's like a lot of onion and tomatoes and chilies <laughs> and no, we cook mutton in it as well there's bheja that you don't see and um i i think that there's a lot aniki sabzi which is like deep fried besan uh with spices cooked in either thum or like a das masala so yeah there's a lot of a lot of Sindhi stuff that needs to get out there fried tain leaves and stuff I could go on but yeah uh, and I think the sin- sinful like you said is sort of one way you can actually uh, you know and you don't know man, add stuff to the menu because yeah. it is really coming out of a home right because yeah. we know that these are things that you can only get in homes you're not getting them in restaurants so hopefully yeah. the guy it, who runs yeah. sinful is listening and he'll add some stuff it to would, his it menu it would just be nice to see a whole menu of different curries yeah. you know like uh, yeah. so that, well, that can be you know your primer to Sindhi food uh, there's also the wonderful Mohini Krishnani who runs a catering service out of Wadala and who gave me provided my dabbas uh, in my previous job anyway so that's it for uh, Bombay Binge and, and that's uh, it for this episode that's it for this episode we'll see you uh, next week meanwhile check out the dailypower.com um, sign up for our newsletter 
on the website and we're also uh, on Facebook, Twitter, also and Instagram on, as the Daily Power. As the Daily Power, and don't forget to follow us on Saban. We know that it's sometimes not easy to find us there, but they have a search tool, <laughs> and you just look for the podcast, and you'll find us. If you like listening to the podcast, check out Made in India with me, the best Indian indie music podcast in the country. Excuse me, brother. Excuse me. Bolle, madam. Menu me kya hai? Menu me seen and seen hai. Podcast hai, encore hai, Cyrus hai, hai, Made in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Wax hai, IVM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, aur the fan garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye? Uh, ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao IVMPodcast dot com pe aur suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke ungliyon pe.